to the Brandwatch webinar uh, on customer care, CX, and competitive di differentiation. Uh, today, um, we have Meg Toth as one of our co-presenters, uh, who is a social engagement manager uh, at the marketing engagement agency, iCrossing in NYC. iCrossing is the only native digital agency to be owned by the world's largest independent media company, entertainment and content company Hearst. Uh, Meg has years of experience managing social presence and strategy for clients across the electronics, education and automotive industry. Uh, myself, I'm Jim Reynolds, uh, Brandwatch's VP of Agency Development. I oversee our agency team here in North America and have been working with social technology since 2008 uh, across software companies and agencies. Uh, to get things kicked off, slide two please. Uh, we'll be doing the Q&A at the end of this session, uh, so please ask us any questions throughout the presentation. Uh, to participate, there are a few different ways. One, tweet us at, at Brandwatch and use the hashtag uh, BrandWatchTips. Two, ask questions via the GoToWebinar interface. Uh, and as always, we'll be recording today's session and we'll send out links uh, to the recording within two business days. Um, so coming up uh, to highlight our agenda, one, we'll be just doing a brief overview of BrandWatch. Two, looking at the definition of what is customer care, Three, uh, walking through a case study and just a few real life examples uh, from iCrossing and their implementation of social customer care programs. And then finally to bundle things up, um, how to improve customer care uh, and develop a strategy with social. So as we talk about Brandwatch for those of you who who may or may not be customers. Uh, we are Brandwatch. We currently do support over a thousand clients across 22 markets. Uh, as we look at this around the relevance of a customer care program, we do support uh, solutions in over 44 languages. Uh, one of our great bullet points that we've enjoyed as of recent is that we do support over 30% of the Fortune 100, and then we do have uh, client engagements and teams in New York, San Francisco, Brighton, Berlin, Stuttgart, and Singapore. And as we get things kicked off, what is social customer care? Um, as being a, a native in this space, he's had the opportunity uh, to both have my problems solved by social customer care, as well as just watching amazing organizations learn, launch, determine, uh, and deploy programs. It really begins with a dream. And I think it's best been said by Frank Eliason, uh, who's best known uh, for his work with Comcast and kicking off the, the Comcast Cares handle. Uh, when consumers think about this concept, customers never wanted social customer service. They wanted to be treated right the first time. So when we think about these overall problems as the advent of outsourced customer support programs, in-source customer support programs, and really looking at those as uh, profit losses rather than revenue generating opportunities, uh, many uh, amazing individuals have kicked off social customer care programs to allow clients to be spoken and heard across uh, social media. Next slide, please. And as we talk about some of these amazing life scale engagements uh, that become uh, really the cornerstones of these engagements, we think about what Nike Support's done. Um, on Nike Support's side, uh, they've created a triage program that allows clients, uh, consumers, and individuals to, to reach directly out to Nike Support, responding in, in real-time fashion uh, to be able to engage to individual um, needs, may it be retail, support uh, to individual programs, as well as product location. Seamless is another great example for those of you uh, who are in major metros. Uh, the great uh, piece here is, is when folks have issues with their individual programs, being able to individually respond, identify and triage those individual pain points. Uh, when we think of, of big retailers, you know, the grandfather of this industry often is Walmart. And when we think about Walmart being able to respond at a per store level, they've ro rolled out just amazing customer support programs and customer care programs across Facebook and Twitter and being able to engage at both negative and positive feedback. And when we think about Intel, um, even though many of their products are distributed uh, directly uh, through product manufacturers, they are interacting on a use case by use case basis and spot to spot basis to be able to support individual engagements. And why this matters. Um, one, when we think of the overall pain points that exist, people simply want to work with companies um, that care 
uh, and, and as stated by the survey results uh, highlighted by a study produced by Zendesk, 75% of people um, will work on returning business again and again with companies that provide excellent service. Two, word of mouth. Uh, if we hear about an amazing customer experience like a Zappos, like a JetBlue, like a Southwest, people are more apt to recommend those experiences beyond just noting a, you know, a lackadaisical, lackadaisical experience. And then three, co uh, consumers simply will just spend more money with companies they want to do business with, as highlighted by the stat of 33% will spend more money with brands that provide excellent customer service. And it doesn't just stop there. Um, as social customer care programs uh, have started to remediate and resolve problems in a quicker fashion, uh, the importance of omnichannel uh, has shown its time and, and face again and again. Uh, as all of us have kind of thought about your experiences, uh, may it be calling into a phone line with a retail company, uh, um, emailing a brand to start to understand uh, issues around your orders. Um, consumers want consistency. So no matter if it's mobile, web, social media, uh, or even uh, email, um, consumers want this experience to be consistent like time again and again. So when we think about these individual experiences uh, with consumers around travel, think about a great customer experience and then think about you know a lackluster customer experience and the importance becomes with omni-channel engagements no matter the channel of engagement consumers just expected to work and expected to be good all of the time uh, now what we'll do is pass uh, the presentation off to Megan uh, who will give us experiences from eye crossing and their best of customer program. thanks Jim um, thanks everyone for joining us I'm excited to be here uh, we're living in a really interesting time right now where customers turn to social media to seek a resolution instead of a call center or a live chat as they used to. And the reality is that today uh, consumers expect a response from brands and companies on social and the stakes are raised even higher than uh, a call center or the way they used to because it's visible to their Twitter audience, their Facebook friends, um, they take screenshots. So the stakes are really high and it's important that brands and companies are armed uh, to handle these social mentions. So what makes customer service good? It all comes down to the customer service agent or representative, the team that you have in place to respond to these mentions. They're the face of your brand and they might be the first um, interaction that a consumer has with a brand on social. Um, so of course they should have commu good communication skills, uh, be um, empathetic, uh, goal oriented, make sure that there's a resolution at the end of the interaction. Um, to improve relationships with your consumers um, and differentiate yourselves amongst your competitors. You want to make the experience memorable and enjoyable so that you have a loyal uh, brand advocate on your side. Um, of course, having good product knowledge is key to meet uh, your consumers' needs and you want them to know all about your product and uh, be able to resolve their original um, their original request or um, issue that they had. Um, so governance. Um, if you don't have a good governance in place, I encourage you to uh, put one together for your brand, your company. Uh, it's really important. It's a roadmap for your customer service agents. Um, and some things to define in your brand's governance are brand voice, things to respond to, and how to respond. Uh, brand voice, when I think of brand voice, I think of uh, Audi versus Fiat on social, for example. Um, you might think Audi, they're smart, they're humorous, they're cool, sometimes snarky on social. Uh, whereas Fiat, they use emojis, it's playful, it's entertaining, um, it's very relatable uh, to, their, to their customers. Uh, so brand voice, it's really your brand's personality on social. Um, so that's one way to think of it and really define it. Make sure that all of anyone touching your brand on social um, is, is responding in the same consistent way. Um, who should respond to what? That's really important. It seems uh, simple and obvious, but you want to make sure that everyone's roles are clearly defined. 
um, that the customer service team is responding to purely customer service type issues and your brand ambassadors are responding or community managers are responding to things like brand love and um, recent product purchases. Um, that's really important to outline before you get started to make sure that duplicate responses aren't occurring and any issues like that. And then how to respond, that's really important. Uh, one thing is to make it a human um, interaction with your brand. Um, so things like uh, brands like Xbox um, do a really great job at using initials, um, making it sound really human and personalized. That's really important. Um, and making it consistent across platforms. Um, a brand I personally have experienced a great um, customer service interaction with is Chipotle, who uh, does a great job. I tweeted that I was excited that I became the mayor of a Chipotle in my neighborhood, um, and they responded by uh, sending me in the mail a handwritten note and a bunch of gift cards for free meals. So they did a really great job. They took it above and beyond, and the handwritten note um, carrying through um, the agent that I dealt with on Twitter um, was a great, um, it made me even more loyal to the brand. Um, some type of mentions, depending on your industry, you'll see different types of mentions, um, whether it's customer service, praise, or users just asking about a company or their products. Uh, if you're lucky, you'll see both positive and negative mentions. And I say that because uh, positive mentions, they're great. You want to um, have praise for your brand and your products. Um, but it's the negative mentions that are an opportunity for your company or your brand um, to turn an unpleasant experience into a really positive one and loyal brand advocates. And that's what you want at the end of the day. You want people that uh, stand up for you and keep coming back and of course sales are um, it's great to be able to show a sale from a customer service interaction. Um, so if your goal is to increase these one-on-one -on -one interactions it might be helpful to look at what type of mentions you see every month whether it's customer service um, around a certain product and then craft responses around those and have a bunch of different responses for these types of issues that you see month over month, and then be able to respond um, higher qu higher quantity every month. Um, but then, of course, just make these um, mentions that these responses that you have uh, personalized. So that's a great way to increase the number of responses you get out every month, um, but also just making sure that it's personalized. And then um, some, strategy, uh, some strategies and tips. Of course, um, we covered some of these um, that your customer service agents um, responding, um, empathizing, uh, humanizing the responses, responding consistently, timely manner. Of course, um, quality is important. Um, so that's why having um, a common response guide would be important. Um, and then also setting clear goals, having this governance in place to make sure that uh, certain teams are responding to certain mentions. Uh, I've learned that uh, consumers can see through cookie cutter type responses, so it's really important not to just copy and paste uh, the same 1-800 number or email address um, to uh, direct consumers to, so instead look at their profile, maybe uh, look at what they're interested in, where they are um, in the country or um, where they live, um, their name, just make it really personal um, because it might be their only interaction with the brand and you want to make it a positive one. Um, and it sounds obvious, but the best approach is to put yourself in the customer's shoes um, and how are they feeling and what would they want out of this interaction is really uh, helpful to think of. Uh, so measuring success, most important. Um, depending on your business and their goals and priorities, you might want to measure success differently, but our clients are most important, um, most um, prioritized sentiment, um, and then number of tickets, which are mentions, opened and closed, number of mentions handled, and then high priority uh, mentions opened and closed. So for sentiment, we measure that on a monthly and quarterly basis. Uh, we review it. Um, it's 
all done within BrandWatch, so it's great um, being able to just look at your dashboard really quickly and it tells you 10% positive, 2% negative, um, very visual. We review sentiment and then um, actually create an advocacy score based on that. So we look at positive percentage minus negative percentage and come up with this advocacy score. And of course we want that to increase um, month over month, um, but we track it based on um, maybe certain trends in the industry, times of year. Uh, so it's important to make sure that if a certain product, um, we find that our product teams and developers for our clients are interested in what is being talked about negatively and maybe they can edit a design or a feature of one of the products and then um, make sure that um, it's adjusted so that you're meeting your consumers needs. Um, and then we look at tickets opened and closed um, which are those mentions as I um, mentioned before. Um, number of uh, tickets opened and closed that's um, based on uh, how many mentions our com community managers and our customer service team are actually opening and responding to and then within BrandWatch um, hitting close and checking that off. While number of tickets handled, um, that differs because that's the community manager uh, which we call um, on our team the watchtower. So they're within BrandWatch and they're actually getting all the results from our query within BrandWatch and um, they're seeing some responses that maybe our community managers shouldn't be responding to whether it's press news or product pricing so we consider those no response type mentions um, but those are a number of tickets handled at the end, at the end of the month. Um, and then we wanted to give you um, just a look at one of our clients, um, this is what they see. This is um, approximately 77 tickets opened every day, um, and 2,000 um, opened every month, and 27,000 opened every year. Uh, so these are the community managers, customer service agents, uh, brand ambassadors, actually opening them, responding, and then closing them within BrandWatch. Um, it's a team of two community managers who run this watchtower that I mentioned. Um, within that, it's for tickets or mentions that are owned spaces for the brand as well as unowned mentions. And then we also have a team of five customer service and brand ambassadors that are in there responding. Um, there's a governance in place so everyone knows which mentions to respond to what they shouldn't respond to and the great thing is if they were um, assigned a ticket that maybe they don't feel comfortable responding to or they're not as familiar with a product as another customer service agent is they can reroute it within BrandWatch and this watchtower and it gets triaged to the appropriate person. They can leave a note within BrandWatch saying uh, their question and everything is done in real time and it makes for impressive results um, as you can see. So this is uh, what the triage system looks like in action. Uh, we have this watchtower with two community managers. Uh, they open the ticket. Um, some, as I mentioned, are marked as no response, um, but most of them um, we actually are able, they're actionable and they're assigned to the customer service brand ambassador team. Uh, the brand ambassador team gets mentions that have to do with pre-sale um, questions, post-sale questions. Um, maybe they have a question about how to set up a product or um, they're having trouble with wiring on a certain um, TV or whatever it might be and then comparison questions among competitors so that's something that we see a lot and those are really opportunities to get that sale all on social so we always mark those as high priority uh, because you have the opportunity to by one tweet or one Facebook post really um, have a sale for your company or your brand um, and then community managers uh, deal with mentions that are about brand love um, or um, people not really enjoying your brand and you have the opportunity to turn that around, that negative sentiment and make it a positive interaction. 
Um, and then from there, uh, the response team, they respond, they close the ticket, and then as I mentioned, they can reroute it uh, within BrandWatch if they uh, don't feel able to answer. So I think that's it for me. We'll send it back over to Jim. Hey, great presentation. This is awesome. Um, so as a quick reminder, uh, before we jump into the additional slides, um, as we posted in the sidebar uh, for the Q&A session, uh, have absolutely no hesitation to, to ask any questions at all. Um, either ask those questions via, via the GoToWeb platform. So on the right-hand side, that little dialog box, you can type in some questions or um, feel free to directly ask the question at BrandWatch utilizing the hashtag BrandWatchTips. Um, we'd love to hear some more questions as we move towards uh, the second half of the presentation. Uh, that being said, thank you very much and we'll get things kicked right back off now. Um, so as we talk about how to plan and resource uh, your individual engagement campaigns, similar to uh, the approach that iCrossing developed, uh, where Meg has just been an amazing champion of this, uh, it all begins with your staff. So as we talked about the example uh, today of the, the Watchtower, um, there are four uh, key models and approaches uh, on how to define and utilize resources. Uh, many clients may take uh, the outsourced approach. So again, finding an, an agency like iCrossing to help develop that program and lead those efforts. Two, uh, leading this communication uh, via uh, marketing or comps. It, you know, because they already handle the brand voice and the engagement of the given voice, uh, it creates an amazing solution. Three, um, understanding that there are folks in your organization who probably know how to do this today. Uh, you know, your customer service teams obviously probably have experience integrating and responding to consumers, but they may not understand the social edge quite yet. Or the fourth and most sophisticated model, how do you do this as an integrated shield, utilizing both outsourced efforts, marketing comms, customer support, as well an overall integrated team. The big important piece here is understanding which approach best meets your organization. Because um, in some circumstances, different owners may own different things. Next slide, thank you. Um, and then to, uh, two, uh, once you've defined what process works the best for you, uh, defining the process. Uh, you know, once you've defined those individual processes, defining those engagements, uh, identification, escalation, and response, because at the end of the day, as noted in the beginning of the presentation and reiterated uh, amongst Meg's uh, presentation, the, cu the, the customer doesn't care. They just want the problem solved and consumers will tell the difference of a trained and true program versus uh, an ad hoc program. Um, and the most important piece here is once you've had those team members trained who, who are socially aware and natives, uh, rehearse. At the end of the day, if, if you haven't tested and validated this response, there's nothing worse than leaving the customers hanging out there. Next slide, please. Uh, and, and then it goes back to measurement. Um, as we highlighted some of the amazing stats, as Meg noted, uh, that the iCrossing team developed as a best of breed agency in this segment, uh, it's very important to understand which metrics align with your organization. Rather than introducing a metric that may not exist, be sure uh, to evaluate tried and true, true metrics. And a few that uh, we, we love to highlight and have used historically um, is respond to percent of mentions, respond uh, within a certain SLA, may it be minutes or hours, um, respond in, in complete ratio. So how quickly is this ticket being closed? What percentage of these tickets are being closed? Uh, average that cost to serve the customer. So uh, how quickly have we done it and what time has that been completed in? And then obviously increase the number of self-serve clients. And then of course, as we have a chance to run these programs in real life, uh, compare the NPS net, uh, measurement uh, as well as uh, the sediment measurement of these consumers who have completed this engagement uh, post-campaign. Next slide, please. And then the importance comes back to scale. Uh, once you've been able to prove and validate this model, uh, the importance becomes of how do you scale this up? So once you've been able to determine a one-to-one -one engagement, how do you define this across the enterprise and then in turn feed these into other facets? One of the most amazing promises that can be delivered from, from social customer care are how are these insights developed and, and pushed directly into our product development programs? And here at BrandWatch, we've seen that impact directly. 
So when clients have the ability to share their experience across social media and provide amazing feedback to the product itself, we have the ability to improve these programs. And now that we've finished the individual webinar, we are going to move forward into the Q&A session. Uh, of course, as we've noted uh, a few times in this webinar, feel free to ask questions now uh, via the at Brandwatch handle, utilizing hash brand, hashtag Brandwatch tips. And then, of course, on the sidebar, feel free to uh, ask any questions via the Q&A. So to kick things off here, I'm going to ask the first question. Um, so, Meg, this one's for you. Uh, for iCrossing, what is an example of how Brandwatch social insights directly made an impact to a customer's experience? Great, yeah. Well, we uh, see a lot for our clients, we see so many times, time and time again, um, multiple times a day, that people are talking about brands, not necessarily um, at mentioning them or even um, using their brand name with a hashtag, but they're mentioning the product and they are almost testing the brand to see if they'll respond if they're listening for these types of interactions. So uh, for our clients, um, we've set up these queries for owned and unowned spaces. Um, and we find a lot of times, um, look at the unowned spaces where your brand might be, be um, mentioned on Twitter. And I found that uh, they are. And if you're able to respond before the competitors, that, that, really, that really changes things for um, your brand on social. But, um, so we found that people will then respond saying, thank you so much for answering our questions, directing me to the right page on your site. I actually just ordered this product. So uh, being able to bring that direct result to um, the CMOs and your sales team, it really proves the value of social, but also listening out listening um, on your own spaces and your unowned. So I would recommend looking um, even on Twitter, um, just searching um, within the, the search bar uh, for your brand and um, they'll mention your competitors in the tweet, but being able to respond first will really uh, make a big difference. Awesome. So it looks like I get to take the next question. Um, so from a uh, listener, uh, we've had the question, how do you suggest getting buy-in from leadership to invest time and resources into building out a, so a social customer care team? Um, so the first example that I'll consistently highlight is, is that it becomes the norm now. Um, it's very rarely when we think about a consumer interacting with a brand uh, that they won't reach out via social. Uh, you know, especially when we look at millennial engagements, new customer engagements, and I'll even highlight my mom. My mom's a 64-year-old um, who wants to have her problem solved, and she'll often ask questions on a Facebook page. Those examples ring true. Two, uh, not that I'm a fan of FUD approaches, so fear, uncertainty, doubt. Show the examples of what happens when folks don't respond to customer care, and this leads to either a churning or an exiting customer um, who may buy from a competitor, as Meg just highlighted. They are listening to white space and competitive queries as part of their campaign. So if you're not listening, there's a good chance your competitor is going to be listening. Next question for Meg. Realistically, how long does it take to build out an efficient social customer care team slash solution? That's a great question. Uh, you know, I wish it was an easier answer, but it's an ongoing process. Uh, at least for iCrossing and our clients, we actually hold um, quarterly trainings with our customer service team on best practices in the social space um, and making sure that they're able to provide uh, the best social care that's possible. Uh, so in those quarterly trainings, we go over things like platform updates, uh, when Twitter um, announced their direct messaging feature from anyone, um, just hashtags that maybe the brand is using in campaigns that the customer service team should be doing. Um, not putting a space when you're replying to someone before their Twitter handle to make sure that it's not public facing. Things like that um, is really important to consistently do. Uh, the governance though is something that you can do today. Um, I recommend looking at considering your business goals um, and then seeing how um, 
a, a full-blown customer care program uh, will impact that and kind of um, what teams you have in place, who maybe you need to hire or bring on. Um, are you measuring um, and look, listening for only your own spaces? Um, what type, are there certain mentions that you will just not respond to as a brand? So there's a lot of questions to be answered. Um, and once you have that in place, you're able to build out your governance. And this roadmap, it becomes a lot easier for everyone to understand what their goals are. The customer service agents know exactly what their role is, um, how they respond. So there's, there's a lot of questions that need to be answered as a brand. And, when you're implementing um, a plan like this, but even if you have one in place, there's still ways that you should always be improving. Every time there's a new platform update, it should be reconsidered um, how your team is working. Um, that Twitter direct messaging feature that was um, huge because now um, anyone can DM your brand. So even something like that, do you want to enable that feature or not, is something that needs to be considered. Great question. Next question here. Um, how should a brand work with negative complaints on social and make sure they have an, a good online reputation on social channels? So um, unfortunately, um, you're not going to only see positive mentions on social and negative mentions they are out there. but. As I mentioned, they're really an opportunity, they're a great opportunity for your brand to uh, change um, perceptions about maybe your products or um, your quality of customer service. Uh, by responding to those mentions, you're letting the Twitter audiences know. Um, they'll probably, what we've found is um, when you respond and make a really positive impact, um, users will retweet that and show their Twitter audience on their public facing timeline this interaction. Um, they get really excited about it. Um, if you're able to, uh, like Chipotle did with me, um, send gift cards, um, give a coupon, a discount, that's um, some examples of ways to um, change that negative experience, reward them, um, and keep them as loyal customers. Um, you're never going to not see a negative mention, um, or maybe there are brands out there that Brand Watch Dashboard sees zero, but um, it's really rare. Um, but it's, as I mentioned, an opportunity. Um, and if brands are being um, inventive in ways that they're turning around um, these interactions, um, but keeping um, turning um, an unhappy customer into a happy one. Um, there's nothing better than that, and they end up being your uh, best brand advocates. So, I love that point you just made there, Meg, about brand ad advocacy, and obviously the importance of potentially taking a negative customer and turning them into a positive customer. Um, next question. What are some of the challenges with how your clients got more investment in social customer care, and how did you approach that? Yeah, so social, just in general, is really tricky to uh, show a direct ROI on it. So especially something like this, a social care program, might be difficult to prove um, why it's valuable and why you should invest in listening to your own and also unowned spaces. Uh, I think finding examples of brands, if it's not your own, but that have, like I mentioned with our clients, um, we've had people reach out to the brand on social, we respond first and then they actually respond saying I made the purchase of whatever product it might be is really important. Um, but also maybe benchmarking uh, where your sentiment levels are beforehand um, and then proving that this program over a month, uh, six months, a year, your sentiment has really changed and this advocacy score that I mentioned um, has become stronger over time is a, another great way that you can um, provide value and show um, that this program is effective. Um, there, it, 
I think it depends on your business goals um, and what's most important, but um, social, it's tricky to begin with um, to show value and um, show its return on your investment, but um, being able to show um, screenshots of examples of a sale because of social, great social customer care um, would be one step in the right direction, I think. Awesome. Hey Meg, and, and this one I guess is from me, now, now that you, you obviously have us all engaged, and, and sorry to bombard you with this. Um, how have you guys factored both paid and SEO into these, these social care programs? Yeah, we uh, work closely with um, both teams, but especially SEO, uh, anytime they update pages and have a new keyword list, they actually send it over to the social team. And then we go into BrandWatch and work with the BrandWatch analyst to make sure that our queries are up to date. So that's something that we consistently uh, do. Um, anytime there's a new campaign for a brand or one of our clients, we're making sure that those query lists are up to date um, because you want to make sure that in your watchtower you're receiving um, as many relevant mentions that you can assign to your response teams as possible. So um, any um, product, sometimes, it's not often, but people won't refer to a product as its product name, but maybe by um, product number. So making sure that you're in um, communication with your SEO team and paid team to make sure that you have the right language and um, product numbers in your query lists as possible is really important and something that we do uh, regularly. Great. Um, and it sounds like this is our last question, uh, unless there are anyone else who wants to jump in and ask questions via Twitter or via the chat bar. Um, the question comes from Twitter, and this question is, is there a metric or a benchmark mark for the likelihood of a customer to share their positive or negative customer experience? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I would say that depending on your brand and how um, you set up your dashboard and what you are currently measuring, uh, you would be able to um, by looking for certain um, maybe tagging these types of great um, interactions um, with a certain tag or just um, keeping track of those in maybe an internal um, document uh, would be a great way. Uh, we certainly share any of these wins where a consumer has um, voiced their question and then we respond as a brand um, and then they mention that they actually followed up and bought the product and um, that sale. We share those wins um, constantly throughout our organizational teams and with our clients um, to show them the value of this program and that um, we're outperforming our competitors and um, social listening, it's more than, and customer care, it's more than just um, sorry to hear that your product, um, there was an issue, but it really, it drives, it can drive sales. So sharing those wins regularly, not just during the holiday season or during um, events where your brand might be talked about, but year round, uh, there's opportunities and showing that competitive edge that you have um, is important. So. I think depending on your brand um, and your products, you can measure it differently, but um, we like to, besides reporting monthly and quarterly on this um, advocacy, uh, I think sharing these wins regularly is um, really beneficial to your organization. Great. Well, Megan, uh, I'll thank you personally from the Little Brain Watch team. Um, for taking the time to take us through this presentation and, and really speaking about your experiences. Clearly, iCrossing has an amazing team member and a great voice uh, to be able to share these experiences. And you're more than welcome in our offices at any time you'd like to share this. Um, at the same time, if anyone has any questions or would like to see the webinar again, uh, the recording will be made available uh, within the next two business days. 
And if any other additional questions pop up, have no hesitation to reach out via at Brandwatch, uh, contact at Brandwatch.com. Our Facebook page, yes, we do respond. If you're a customer, uh, the Brandwatch community, questions can be asked there. And of course, Google Plus is still there. Uh, don't have any hesitation to ask any questions on Google Plus as well. Um, and that being said, everyone, thank you very much for taking the time to join us today on your busy Wednesday. And if there are any other questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out directly to any of our teams. Have a wonderful day.